name is Des Kearns. I have a small architecture and conservation practice and my role here was to lead the uh, restoration of the um, truss repair on the inside of the church plaster repair, uh, eradication of the dry rot and also on the outside for the reef roofing project which is currently nearing completion. The problems manifest themselves on the inside of the church initially by the discovery of dry rot and some of the timber trusses which being eight metres up and holding up the whole roof uh, was a key thing to uh, try and get sorted so uh, the church then uh, engaged me with a couple of others and we arranged for the church to be scaffolded and for all of the trusses to be checked and inspected and we found five of them needed to be uh, repaired and spliced. We cut out uh, rotten timbers and put that all back so that was phase one. Uh, that highlighted the urgency of the external roof repair. Uh, so again the uh, the church were were brave and pushing forward with that investment to try and uh, re-slate the entire roof, replace all of the lead work and all of the valley gutters and all of the rainwater goods had to be refurbished as well to make sure that it's it's uh, ready for the next hundred years. The contract was awarded to Woodville Construction for the external and internally the trusses. That work was done by Peter McAlean Contracts. Um, both are experienced in conservation work, and but it also requires a lot of detailing and um, specification of, of suitable products for a building like this, particularly um, trying to insulate a roof that doesn't have a flat ceiling uh, that requires different membranes and in this case the, the church invested in wood fibre insulation which is also a lot more sustainable. We did expect that uh, whenever we lifted the slates up because we weren't changing the ceiling we wanted to keep it intact meant that we had to do everything from the top but we, we were expecting plaster to be discovered between the rafters and there was quite a lot of that. It meant that we, we had to remove that and uh, I think there was something like five skip loads of plaster taken off the roof. So that's a lot to get down, which thankfully they had a crane on site for, um, but also for the, the men to work on a pitch that's 52 degrees at that height to try and, and do all of that. So that's a, um, that was a hard work. What was a surprise was some of the whenever on the gables, how thick the walls were, but where the walls were actually built up between the rafters. We had to reduce that to get proper lead flashings in, that sort of thing. So, But on the most part, uh, the project was fully designed before it came to site, so, uh, it, which is good for cost control. The roof slates, because generally in Northern Ireland, the roof slates are from Wales, uh, Penryn, um, or Bangor Blue as they commonly known. So uh, all of the slates that are being replaced are all from uh, the quarries in Bangor and uh, they're a, a heavier Celtic slate um, which again will last to the longevity but there have been some replacements over the years but this is the first time the roof has been stripped since the building was built. I can say with confidence now that we're nearly finished. Uh, it's been enjoyable, it's been great to get your teeth into uh, the job like this and it's been great to work with the church here who you know, are confident in investing this amount of money on this site which is key for the people of Lurgan I believe and uh, I think it's going to be important uh, to recognise this is going to be probably one of the biggest assembly spaces in the centre of Lurgan uh, to be used by the community as well as the, the congregation for uh, building the community and hopefully bringing prosperity and, and good news to the town. We're in the midst of a, of a very large repair, uh, renovation and refurbishment project which began uh, in the early months of 2022 um, when we discovered dry rot in the church. And that was quite a surprise because we had been thinking ahead to some refurbishment and reordering of the inside of the church. We were working towards that uh, for 2025, which is actually the 300th anniversary of the first church on this site. Um, but the dry rot kind of interfered with that slightly uh, and necessitated that the church be closed at that stage. 
But we really want uh, at the conclusion of this process for this building to be uh, not just for the parish community but for the whole community uh, and that people can come to events, uh, not just services but other events and access it during the week uh, to connect and to build community here in the centre of the town. The, the, the biggest challenge in doing this is financial um, and we've already spent over a million pounds on the repair work um, but we, we've been able to uh, to achieve that first part through hard work, um, through uh, the generosity of many people. And as Christians, obviously we believe is with, with God's help as well, and we, and we look to that very much. Um, the other challenge is for over two years now, the congregation has been out of this building. And one of the things that I found hardest is that over these two years, for significant life events, particularly weddings, and probably more so funerals, um, people who would have loved to have celebrated or marked those life events in this building haven't been able to. So we look forward to the day when we can be able to do that again. Um, so that's been difficult. But the flip side of that is we've been meeting in the Jethro Centre, which um, some of the viewers will know is at the, at the far end of town. Uh, and that's been um, in, a, in, a, in a much, a very different context, but in a, in a context that allows us to really build that sense of community on a Sunday and the accessibility and the, the flexibility that a modern building brings. I think that's helped us to see that uh, those kind of aspects, so that flexibility and that accessibility, um, done tastefully and appropriately in this building are something that we really need to aim for. And as part of that, uh, as we're developing our plans, we're working with our architect, who's also working closely with HED, the Historical Environment Division, to ensure that our plans uh, reflect and uh, retain, but also enhance the beauty and the history and the legacy of the church.